Welcome to the Design Knit video learning series. In this tutorial, we'll be working in original pattern drafting to learn the basics of this section. Right now, all the buttons are grayed out except for the printer, the help, which brings up a context sensitive help, very extensive, and the open thumbnails. So, the easiest way to get used to using this section is to open a garment shape from the standard garment styling section. Let's go there now. I'm going to say I'd like to open up an existing garment and then I would like to open up the child's sweater and here it says child's sweater okay to continue and I'm going to delete this sleeve so it's out of the way so I have a sweater open I can go right back into original pattern drafting and now I'm going to say this is centralize a piece centralize all the pieces so I can see all the pieces that make up this garment shaping file I can have up to 16 garment pieces within a file. Currently I have four. So before we get to the buttons, let's talk some tips about working with the garment pieces on the workspace. This white piece means it's the active piece. This is a vertical mirror where things that happen on this side are reflected on this side of the garment so that you can make symmetrical garments. I'm going to turn this vertical mirror off with this button here. I can say centralize this piece here. I can turn the numbering on. Let's say centralize the pieces, all of the pieces again. And you can see that the numbers on here are quite busy, so let's turn the numbering back off just for a minute. We, with my right mouse button, I can drag these pieces. Let's look at the sleeve and say this is the active piece. If I click on a point, it becomes green square around it which means that's the active point if I use my left mouse and I drag it way out here it's changed the garment it's moved the point out where I put it but because the vertical mirror was on it's also done it on this side as well I can say undo to get back to where I was if I don't have the mirror on and I click on this point and I move it out it only moves what on that side of the garment. If I then say reflect, turn the vertical mirror back on, it says reflect existing points from left to right, and I say yes, it puts it over here as well. So let's turn the vertical mirror off, and let's say undo, and undo, and now we're back to where we were. We can undo 20 times, so this, this is a big plus. Let's click with our left mouse button to make the front the active piece. This next set of buttons affects how you view the pieces on your workspace. Centralize the piece here makes this the current piece the largest that it can possibly fit in the workspace. Centralize all is next and this lets you see all the pattern pieces in the garment shaping file. Let's go back to centralize piece. This is the big cursor button which changes it into a very large cursor. I can come down to the bottom and there we go. It'll line up red when it's exactly lined up with that particular part of the garment piece. If you look all the way over to the right on this line, the big cursor, it says zero. And if you look at the bottom, I can also line that up so it's zero and zero. When it says zero on both the horizontal and the vertical rulers, this means that this is the point of origin. And we'll discuss this much more in depth later. This is a very valuable point of origin. Next, we want to turn the big cursor off. We want to turn the numbers on. Numbering convention is that the upper highest and leftmost point is point number one. So we have point number one, two, 9 and 10 are all at the same height so point number 1 highest and leftmost point if I moved point number 2 making it and it's put a green thing about it and I moved it up to here now this becomes point number 1 because it's the highest and leftmost point in the garment and then it numbers it clockwise all the way around the garment and I'm going to say undo and now I have my point numbering back to where I was, and I have my front garment piece. Because you can undo up to 20 times, this means you can walk back and forth for a mistake, or if you change your mind about the shaping, it's okay. There's a folder here. I'm not, I'm not going to save these changes. 
that brings up the thumbnail shaping section. This is a baby cardigan right here. And here's the child's top that we're working on right now. You can see, let's go back to our child's sweater, OK, and centralize the piece. And we would like to make two new pieces called pockets. And so I'm going to say piece, make a new piece, and I'm going to call this one pocket one, OK, fit to, length, fit to length, five inches, and fit to width, four inches. So now I've made a little pocket. You turn the numbering off, it's kind of busy. Turn the vertical off, and here's our pocket. Let's put this over here. And if I make the, this the active piece, now this one is not the active piece anymore, but it's blue. This is a standard garment styling piece that originated from standard garment styling. This is a piece that originated in original pattern drafting only. And in fact, we can say piece, select piece. And it gives us the names of all the pieces, front, back, and two sleeves. And they all say SGS for standard garment styling, except this one says OPD, and that's the pocket number one. It was never in standard garment styling. It's only in original pattern drafting created. Let's say centralize the piece again. There's point numbering on. There's a point here for the armhole, another point here for the armhole edge. This is the markers button, and I, I can see that I have a marker here and a marker here. And there's a marker on this piece as well. Turn the markers off. If I want to measure, this is measure edge. I have to measure clockwise, so I'm going to measure from point 12 clockwise to a higher number, which is 13. And it's telling me that it's 15.4 inches to across the bottom. If I want to measure the neckline, measure edge again, I can measure from point 2 over to point 9, and it measures it down around and then back up again, and it's 9.3 inches. I can rotate my piece by saying rotate at 90 degrees if I'm going to be doing sideways knitting. I can say undo that. I can change the point of origin to this corner if I wanted, and now the ruler snaps to here this zero and it also snaps to this zero here. So this is now the point of origin and this is zero and zero. If you're working, you can say options, units of measurement and change it from inches to centimeters, but faster is to say inches. This changes it into stitches. It's saying here now it's from here to here is not the 15.4, uh, it's 125 stitches wide at this particular tension, which is 8.13 stitches, 10.16 rows per inch. Let's say option tensions, and let's change our tensions to 8 stitches and 10 rows to the inch. OK. And you can see it's telling me here 50 colon 47. That, that's kind of a meaningless number because it's going around a corner. We can turn off this point numbering if we want with this button here. But we can have the point numbering on and say measure edge again and click on the first of the two points that defines this measure edge and it'll make it go away. We have the ability here to have horizontal rulers. If I want, here's my zero and I'm in rows right now. If I want to know how many rows it is up to only the neckline, it's 140 rows to the neckline and it's 865 rows. Well, let's move it over here so we can see better. It's 162 rows to the top of the shoulder. This is the basics of getting up and running, and uh, the rest of the buttons are covered in other tutorials. So happy knitting. Thank you.